Hello everyone and welcome to episode 71 of the TW2020 New Japan Pro Wrestling Series here on the channels. It is the New Japan Cup, which obviously means the 32-man single elimination tournament to decide who will be the New Japan Cup winner. Of course, we'll take on the heavyweight champion Shinsuke Nakamura at Sakura Genesis, which obviously this New Japan Cup always a, a special little show, not only because of it's a fun tournament to book, but also because obviously this was the starting point for us. Many moons ago, it seems like now, back in uh, 2020 of March. But uh, as far as this is, uh, this is going to be a fun tournament, for sure. It's definitely, you know, as far as our roster at this point is in a pretty unique situation because a lot of the guys that we saw kind of in the beginning of the save, as far as like the Japanese, they have talent that now have gotten to the point where they've gotten so old that it, you know, we're not really able to see them, unfortunately. Guys like Tomorishi, Hiroki Goto, obviously Satoshi Kojima, and. Hiroshi Tenzan, Yuji Nagata, the old guard, and Minoru Suzuki too, and uh, it, it's it's definitely, we've seen the change of kind of the roster right now, which has been pretty interesting to see. Uh, we'll see how this 32-man tournament is going to play out, but before we get into the tournament, though, I do want to have a quick little uh, rest in peace to Jerry Jarrett. Jerry Jarrett is probably one of the most fascinating people in the history of the business, in the sense of his kind of trajectory into the business will never be duplicated again. So his mom, you know, Christine Jarrett, was hired by Nick Goulis and, uh, as far as to sell, like, tickets. And this was in the late 40s, which is pretty wild. I, you know, as far as she, in my opinion, and as far as from what I have seen and gathered, was, like, the first kind of woman as far as being a part of the wrestling business from that perspective that worked her way up from selling tickets in the late 40s to in the... Early 60s, around, yeah, I would say the early 60s, started helping promote shows in, like, Louisville and Lexington. And uh, as far as to have that start, it, it is pretty wild for somebody like Jerry. Because Jerry started helping his mom when he was, like, seven years old. <laughs> he was selling programs. He was fucking, uh, you know, doing concession stand work. He was, uh, you know, as far as, he was also selling the tickets. And then he started... He got his license at like 14, which is wild. But they started, uh, as far as helping out, renting out the venues, helping as far as set up the ring. He was doing all this shit. Eventually, got to the point where he would form uh, Continental Wrestling Alliance Memphis, as far as the wrestling territory, which uh, Memphis was awesome. Like Memphis had a lot of great TV angles, and uh, as far as I think a lot of people kind of knock the wrestling style that Memphis has, or had, rather, but um, as, as far as their TV angles, they were it, it was fantastic. You could really see the kind of the brilliance of Jerry Jarrett uh, from that perspective. There's an angle specifically that uh, I, I have in mind as far as uh, this was March 1st, 1986. It was Jerry Lawler's return to Memphis, and uh, as far as they blinded uh, Jerry Jarrett, and he uh, cut this great little promo in the in like the arena right by like the little uh, interview stand station they had in the arena uh, i was just it was really really awesome to kind of as far as jerry because jerry was a wrestler for a little bit before he you know as far as uh, became a promoter uh he got trained by uh he was trained by toji tojo yamamoto rather as far as that was one of his dear friends too which is pretty wild to think as far as getting trained by one of your best friends uh, but yeah, I mean, as far as from that, obviously, just from that alone, you'd be like, that's a, a kind of a pretty awesome trajectory. They, you know, Memphis was basically one of the last territories, you know, as far as they basically, you know, Jerry sold his stakes in 95, but they were around for a hot minute. They stayed around till like 97, and even then, uh, you know, as far as Vince bought Memphis, as far as they kept it as a, like a dev fed for like a hot minute, uh, as far as, yeah, like, Brian Danielson was was sentenced there, or sentenced there was sent there. Uh, so Regal was sent there after uh, he came back from the you know the real man's man gimmick. A lot of just kind of crazy from that perspective. Again, as far as if Vince goes to jail during the steroid trial, he was the the guy that was positioned to to take his place if that happened. Now, obviously, I think a lot of people have kind of speculated that like, he probably wouldn't be. Like, running the company probably would just been, like, a quote-unquote figurehead while Vince was running it from the inside. But, I mean, I, I think he'd be pretty... I mean, obviously, that kind of period in time 
wrestling would change so much just in that kind of short little time. As far as like the mid '90s was, you know, one of the worst periods in American wrestling uh, history. So he probably would not have done all that well. But I think as far as from a television perspective, I think he would have been able to do a lot of cool angles. Uh, but you know, again, you know, it, a lot of hypotheticals there. And then, of course, you know, uh, ECW, WCW uh, closed down. There's no other, you know, American wrestling promotion until uh, he backs, you know, NWA, TNA, which, uh, you know, again, that's just in itself, backing TNA, when there was no other alternative. And you could see how much an alternative in the American wrestling market is needed. Uh, especially, obviously, we hoped for the success that, like, AEW has with TNA. It never reached that level, unfortunately. But it was close. Definitely close. And, uh, you know, no one thought that they would be, you know, as far as their pay-per-view market in the beginning. You know, so far as selling weekly pay-per-views. You know, the nine ninety nine I believe, was the price for them. And to think, you know, it's 23 years later. I mean, sure, it's a different name and it's had so many goddamn different... Uh, stages and whatnot, and of course, they, uh, he sold his stakes to Panda Energy pretty relatively soon, uh, within TNA's kind of lifetime, but he, you know, as far as, and I know him and, and Jeff, unfortunately, there was, from being in the same, you know, as far as running TNA together, that's a, sometimes that could be a, a tough kind of thing to juggle as far as from a parent and a, uh, son relationship, and I think that definitely kind of, hurt their relationship unfortunately but i think they reconciled a couple i want to say it was like 2013 2014 it took like 10 years but they luckily reconciled for jerry's passing just because jerry you know as far as he, he literally there'll never be another one like him just from the sense of there's not a prominent wrestling promotion that will have a son and then that son will have a Incredible work. I know I mean, Jeff's, you know, as far as Jeff has his faults, but I mean, he is, you know, as far as it's 2023 20, and he was on AEW television, I think that kind of shows that what type of talent he can be as far as from that perspective. It's just wild. It, it's just wild. And what seeing his, his passing was just like, man, that, there will never be another one like Jerry Jarrett. Uh, but yeah, yeah, as far as the tournament, to now pigeon back over to this, as far as the New Japan Cup tournament, oh, yeah, let's go with this one. Never mind. There we go. I wanted to see the the full picture here. The bracket looks like this. The 32 men selected here. Obviously, there's no champions involved. Also, no Kazuchika Okada and uh, Zack Sabre Jr. As Zack is already, you know, he's already positioned as a, I guess you could say, number two contender. So he felt the need, you know, obviously not to be a part of this and, and keep training and keep focusing on the winner of that Sakura Genesis matchup. But also... Uh, for Kazuchika Okada, after losing the Intercontinental title to Tyler Black, I thought like it'd be a great time to give him some time off. And the idea is, like, kayfabe-wise, like, you know, he's taking time off with his wife type of thing. It's kind of like maternity leave type of thing is what we would, you know, tell the press. But, obviously, that would be completely up to him. <laughs> that would be a great time to do that. But, obviously, um, you know, as far as, from, from that perspective, as far as you, you might as well do something with that time that we're giving you. But, uh... Yeah, well, you know, as far as, so, no Okada, which, I think Okada's only been in two New Japan Cups that we have booked. I believe it was the first one, and then the third one. He was, it's kind of, he used to do, like, every even one, so it would have been funny if he was in this one as well, but, just felt like it, his time was better suited elsewhere for this, as, uh, yeah, in the tournament, looks like this, though, Eddie Kingston, Katsuri Shibata, Taichi versus Tetsuya Naito, Taichi's, of course, return to New Japan Cup action, should be pretty fun. Claudio Castagnoli versus Roderick Strong. That's a fun-ass match. Juice Robinson versus Ray Fenix. So that's going to be night one, or day one, of the New Japan Cup. Day two, Hanari versus Walter. Shingo versus Tomoe Harada. Evil versus Kenta. And then Josh Alexander versus Miro. Which, uh, that's a pretty solid night, too, as well. I mean, Tomoe Harada getting a big opportunity against Shingo. Uh, Walter's been incredible. That's obviously his first New Japan Cup, I believe. That's his first New Japan Cup. Uh, and then Kenta and Evil is a fun little matchup there. Uh, night three, day three, Fred Yeah versus Pac, which, what a fun match. That is a match I would love to see in real life. Uh, that'd probably be pretty awesome. Brody Lee, Leona Fujinami, Alex 
Hammerstone, as we had to put this because he didn't have enough space to fit in the goddamn graphic. But Alexander Hammerstone versus Sonata. Then Jay White versus Pentagon Jr. That's a fun little match. As far as, uh, potentially we might be able to see that, depending on Jay White, depending on where Jay White goes. If it's to AEW or to WWE. And, uh, the final day of the first round matchup, stay four, Carl Fredericks versus Hiromu Takahashi. Kushida versus Takuya Nomura. I'm trying to think if Kushida was ever in the New Japan Cup before he left. I want to say he he did have a match. I could be wrong, though. I don't think he did. So I want to say that's his debut in the New Japan Cup. Malachi Black versus the Great Okan. And then Joe Doring versus Katsu uh, Kitamura. So there's a chance for United Rage to face off against each other in the second round there. But uh, some fun matches, though, for sure, in this first round. Definitely excited for, you know, the Yehi Pac match. Claudio and Roderick Strong's a, a fun little match. Of Juice and Ray Fenix is a fun match, too. And... Josh Alexander Miro should be good. And Naito and Tai Chi, they have their history. It's a lot of fun stuff, though. Kingston and Shibata would be awesome, but obviously we know Shibata's limited as far as performance-wise right now, which is unfortunate. But yeah, that is the bracket. So we'll go back to having this on the bottom corner just to keep everybody up to speed here as uh, we will be just shortly... There we go. As far as I just want to make sure that is squared away. So yeah, on to day one. Uh, we'll have to add a match or two to this as far as uh, should should probably be two matches. But they got us a Nariya Goku for this first day. I don't hate that, but we'll kind of look and see where we... Uh, we ran the uh, Nagoya Civic General Gymnasium last time, which that's probably a good call. Shino and O'Reilly. Sucks if we didn't have Kyle O'Reilly in this. I thought about it, but... Kind of opted against it. Miro and Shibata, though. Obviously, you know, Shibata being on this night as well. Josh Alexander and Kenta. Kenta losing the first round is pretty interesting. Tanahashi and Tai Chi. Oh, okay. So, Tana yeah, Tanahashi was in the one two years ago. So that, that is... That's nice to see as far as a nice little return. Calvin Dickman and Shelton Benjamin, too. Zack Sabre Jr. and Masashi Takeda. That's a, a fun-ass match. Suzuki and Sanada. Shingo Chai. Man, Tai Chi's always on this first night, it seems like. Oh, man, I forgot we we booked David Boy Smith Jr. for a hot minute. Yeah, that was when we had him in Suzuki Gun. Yeah, it was Return, then Ishii, and an R.A. Man, the first ever show we booked. Yeah, that was back when we were like, yeah, we should run uh, eight matches. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, that was a, a short-lived idea. Kojima and Hayao Tamora. Passing on microphone work to Hayao Tamora. We did add some, some new pictures. That's going to be fun to see. As far as the main event goes, that is a good question. Yeah, we'll run the Nagoya Civic General Gymnasium. So I feel like Ray Fenix and Juice Robinson should probably be the main. I know it's kind of weird to say, but I think it's going to be the best match. Ray Fenix is going to beat Juice Robinson. That's a big win. Tai Chi versus Naito. As uh, Tai Chi going to get the win. What an upset for Tai Chi over Tetsuya Naito. As are going to be some interference from El Phantasmo and from uh, Bushi. As they're both going to be trading. As far as uh, El Phantasmo is going to come out first, interfere. Bushi's going to try to even the, the fray. But eventually, it's just not enough. You know, as far as uh, you know, Naito isn't able to withstand the pressure from Tai Chi. And oh boy, yeah. I, I figured that was going to happen. Naito is definitely like, yeah, let's not have me lose to Tai Chi. God damn it. Uh, but Eddie Kingston and Shibata will add this match right here. As Kingston's going to beat Shibata in 20 minutes. And give it a break. Shibata and then Claudio Castagnoli and Roderick Strong. So, this is going to be a little bit of a backstory to this. So, first of all, you see here. Time of the draw. First draw that we have ever booked in this New Japan Cup. And as far as I think this is the best case scenario for the New Japan Cup. As far as to, to finally bust out a draw. I think a lot of people are not looking forward to seeing a draw as far as they're not seeing it as far as uh so that unpredictability from that perspective is uh is a fun idea to, to change it up a little bit but also uh zach Sabre jr so before uh claudio you know claudio's on the back prepare for his match and we'll have zach be booked in a match here before uh that match starts so i'm trying to think before we'll go with a six man or regular tag i think we'll go with a six man Yes, so Zack. And uh, we'll probably go with the... 
Here we go, Gresham. Yeah, Gresham and Lacker Bay. I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, Nakamura kind of be. Yeah, let's do that. Nakamura, and then we'll go Shelly and Tomato. Hey, 10 minutes. Oh, maybe not 10 minutes. Go with, uh, I go 17. As we will have Makabe over Shelly. Oh, yeah, yeah, as far as Nakamura's the agent. Uh, but, yeah, and a little, as far as after that match, we're going to see, actually, before I, we add that, I want to make sure this is set for Steal the Show, because we need that to be a Steal the Show matchup. Oh, yeah, I had a feeling that was mm, a potential... Possibility of that happening, okay. So, uh, as far as uh, Claudio warming up backstage, Zach, and uh, as far as Makabe and Gresham are behind him, and you know, Zach's just kind of seeing what's the uh, what's the call, you know, from Claudio. Is he joining the United Empire? Is he not? And Claudio just yeah, tells him up front, like, listen, you know, I thought about it, and I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm still weighing my options. We'll see how this new Japan Cup goes, and Zach just goes, well, alright, fair, fair enough, but definitely is kind of feeling a little bit like he's getting jerked around a little bit, and, and he's not really, you could see frustration in his kind of response in his, in as far as his mannerisms, but it's not full-on upset, he, he, he could, it's more of just like a, oh man, you know, just as far as, he, he's kind of just pissed off about, you know, Claudia still delaying it more than anything. And because of that, you know, as far as he, you know, showing back up and costing Roderick Strong a, or rather, costing Claudio Castagnoli a potential win. I don't know why we put Shelley there. Go with Makabe and Jonathan Gresham. So basically, the, the idea of that finish, as I don't know why I hit auto name, is Claudio still. Doesn't want to commit to the UE. Uh, yeah, uh, as far as hits the neutralizer, it looks like he's got a pin. Uh, but Zach is as ringside, puts the foot on the ropes for Roderick Strong to cost Claudio, you know, the win. Claudio doesn't realize it at first, you know, as far as cause he's got the legs hooked, but he's looking, you know, the opposite way. And to see that, I think, uh, as far as from a potential storyline perspective, I think that's a fun idea to kind of be like, okay, you're not going to join us? Well, now you're going to be against us type of thing. You're you're either with us or you're not type of mentality from Zack Sabre Jr. And, uh, you know, as far as I think that's going to be a, a fun finish. So that means also that Ray Phoenix obviously gets a buy in the second round because it's a draw. So he will be going on. To uh, the third round, just like that. So he's got one less match than everybody else. So a huge advantage for Ray Phoenix from that perspective. And uh, we will have, as far as I would like to, uh, yeah, tag match probably be a good idea for the opener. Trying to think what would be a good call here. Yeah, because we got, you know, obviously. I can't, yeah, shooting. I <laughs> that. Sure, do you know it'd be a good idea as well to have maybe potentially open up the show? Kind of want to see Shane Strickland or Shane Strickland rather and Myron Reed get the win. That would also be a good call. Wouldn't hate that at all. Or even Christian Casanova and, and Shane Strickland, but uh, we'll go with t -t -t trying to think. Would be a good call here. Coughlin Connors isn't a bad deal. Yeah, let's do that. So 
we'll have Shane Strickland get a win, because I think Shane should do pretty well here. Obviously, uh, Coughlin and Connors are going to probably be, you know, the better team. But all in all, I think this should still be a pretty... Oh my god, you yeah, are not happy about that. Um, yeah, we might have to call an audible here. Oh yeah, that's right, Daniel Garcia is recognizable. We'll go uh, Garcia and show. Or we can go Kyle O'Reilly and, and Garcia too. Yeah, let's do that. The Foundation are going to lose now, but it's uh, going to be at least to, to Kyle and Garcia. It's still a banger matchup, though, all things considered. See how we're doing on the... Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, I thought we had this as a Techno Masterclass match. I guess we did not. Yes. That here, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, the draw. Again, you know, just as far as from the perspective of something new and unique, it is fun to see. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it should be, should be, as far as quotes there, uh, should be pretty solid. Hopefully, you know, everything goes well, uh, from that perspective. But, yeah, because I'm trying to think. I really don't think New Japan's ever had a, uh, you know, as far as, like, a draw. You know, we've had, we've seen them have buys, but I don't think there's ever been a draw on any of the tournament, you know, matches. So, it's something unique and new. Which is uh, nice to see. But we'll run this opener here. It's a 70. That is really good, actually. Shane Strickland was 62, 54 for minor read. I mean, that's solid from uh, Shane Strickland. But obviously, you know, with O'Reilly being in the match, definitely the right decision. 77 for the sixth man. United Empire versus Kingdom of Strong Style is uh, Makabe with the arm trap German suplex over Alex Shelley. Probably should have had the Mano take the loss, but I just feel like we've had Kaiji lose... A whole lot more than we have had him win. <laughs> as far as, a, you know, as of late. But I got the crowd honor, though. Angle did pretty well. That kind of struggled a little bit. Oh, the draw, I mean, it was a 78. Which is not bad. That's what the distraction is, as far as Claudio hitting the neutralizer. Got the, you know, foot on the ropes. That is, uh, you know, as far as, you know, Claudio not knowing that Zach had it until he, you know, turns around and he sees that kind of going back up the, uh, as far as the entrance way, being like, what the hell is, is going on there? But, you know, it's, far, it's simple. It's a simple story, you know, uh, from that perspective. 74 for Kingston Shibata. Great chemistry there. Fun match. Got the crowd buzzing. Backdrop driver from Kingston. Bit of a harken back to what uh, Japanese Brothers is all about. And that matchup. And then Taichi and Naito was 70. And there's a lot of bells and whistles on this one, but Taichi gets the win. Or the Tai Chi Clutch in 22-44. Then a 77 for Ray Phoenix and Juice. Lack of chemistry there. Uh, or not lack of chemistry. Uh, lack of psychology, rather. It's unfortunate, but Ray Phoenix was a 90. 70 for Juice. The Meteora for Ray Phoenix. And that's a massive win. That was a decent little show. I, I mean, as far as everything being like in the 70s, obviously we're now at the point where we are what, five years in. Yeah, uh, five years in. So, you know... The, the roster is obviously at to a point where we can have successful shows. And uh, it definitely is shown there. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're going to have quite the uh, day two, though, I think. I think day two is going to be a, a, quite a banger show. Miro and Josh Alexander. Volta and Ari should be a fun little matchup, too. And, and Shingo and Harada's different. So, yeah, we'll see how day two lines up. Alrighty, day two. As they want us in Ryo Goku again here for this second day. Don't think that will be the case, but uh, AJ Styles and Sonata, what a first round matchup that is. Roman Tankman, Kieran Noir, Roderick Strong, Juice and Jeff Cobb, Sonata and Shibata, it's Sonata, back to back show, Kenta and Ishii, and Jeff Cobb again, back to back shows for him in years. Tanashi Kojima, that's a fun match to have. I oh, mean, Yujiro and Brody, I think that's when we did the, uh, the Tim Dance Brody Lee finish. I want to say that that was that show. Could be wrong. I thought it was him, but I could have swore it was, it was a Toriyama match we did that on it. Either way. That that was fun to do, though. Uh, so, okay, yeah, and then Okada and Jay White. So, there's it. Nakata, Suzuki, Juice, and Coughlin. Then <laughs> Tongalo and Dave Finley Jr. Of course, guys, no longer in the company. 
Oh, but yeah, we have a backstage incident. Oh, we got a couple of them, actually. Uh, Nagata, the Great Okan, passing on psychology. Is Nagata to the Great Okan. And uh, Shibata's passing on tips, on selling tips, rather, to SB Kento. Uh, yeah, so day two. Yeah, I think we're just gonna go with the uh, Hiroshima Sun Plaza. I think that's the play. I've actually, yeah, we'll actually run this perfectual sports center. Be 8,000 strong. Might as well. Might as well. So the main event's gonna be interesting, because, I, you know, Kent is probably gonna do the best performance, but I think that Alexander Mira match is probably gonna be the best, but I wouldn't be surprised if we have this as the technical masterclass matchup. Okay, we don't. So Miro gonna beat Josh Alexander, so that's a big win for Miro. Kent and Evil will go here. Kent is gonna beat Evil in 21 minutes. I think everyone probably saw that coming. And, uh, yeah, I want to say Hanare and Valter. I don't think it's a technical match class match, but it's not. So, 20-minute matchup. Valter getting the win over Hanare. And then Shingo and Arata set for steal the show as uh, Shingo's going to get the win over Arata. I really wanted to pull the trigger on Tomoya Arata here, but just don't think it's going to be necessary. Plus, we already have Naito losing night one. Just felt like it'd be a bit of an overkill uh, from that perspective. We'll go with a tag as far as going into this matchup. Um, I'm trying to think what would be a good call. I kind of want to see Dorada and Flamita team. There we got Flyer now. Uh, we might go with a... Like an Abe Jason Lee match. A little blast off action. I don't hate that. I don't hate it. Uh, we'll go with a 16 minute matchup though. As we will have Abe beat Flamita. I think that's probably for the best. Good stuff there. 16 minute matchup. And then the, uh, as far as the technical masterclass opener, go with a six man. Uh, let's see here. I mean, Ten Koji and Deguchi could make sense as far as like the old guard putting them on for this show. But then again, this that would probably make the match not so great. So we are. And there's a potential there. Um... You know, we might actually do... If we can... I don't think we do Drew Parker in uh, Shoto Yumino, but we'll go with Ishimori in Yumino in a singles matchup. To give Ishimori a win, because he could kind of use one. He has not been getting his wins as of late. You know, lost to Pentagon Jr., and that's why Pentagon's in this New Japan Cup matchup. Or, in the, in the actual tournament, rather. And obviously, that's day three when we'll be seeing him in action. But yeah, uh, no angles. Just straight up, you know, as far as from that perspective. An opener. Uh, it gets a 65 here. It's Ishimori and Yumino have great chemistry, though, so that's nice. Bloody Cross from Ishimori in 16 minutes. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Is that it? Next segment. There we go. As um, Dorada and Flamita, Mexa Blood, losing to Blast Off as uh, Abe with the Shining Wizard over Flamita. Right decision. Right decision for sure. Shining Wizard for Abe is always nice to see. Shingo beating Harada. He was off his game. But he gets the one to last of the Dragon in 12 minutes. It's a 50, or a 67, rather. Not the best, but... Uh, Valter, beating an the Cone Bomb in 20 minutes. Valter's the man, so that's awesome to see. A little Gaijin matchup, though. There, between Valter and Anari, and then Evil and Kenta. Kenta with a go-to-sleep. That's uh, why that was only a 77. I hope Kenta's not declining. Oh, he's holding back a little bit. That's all right. Still a decent little matchup, and hopefully the main event delivers. Eh, it's an 80. Josh Alexander losing to Miro. as the bold plex there. And 26.05. A solid little show. Uh, you know, could have gained one more in Oceana, but that's okay. As far as popularity there. But not uh, not a necess necessarily a uh, a need there. But Volta and Ari being the best match. Did not see that coming. 
That's that's exciting. And not bad. And not a bad little uh, day two show. On to day three. We go. Alrighty, day three. As uh, as far as this main event, probably Yay High and Pac. I'm not sure though, because I think I have that as a Techno Masterclass matchup now. I'm thinking about it. Uh, so either Hammerstone and Sonata or Jay White and Pentagon Jr. Probably Hammerstone and Sonata, if I had to guess. But uh, Kojima has a microphone work too. Hey, out tomorrow. Hans and Ishii, Doring and Goto, Brody Lee and Fredericks. Not bad, not bad at all. Um, we'll go with a. I was thinking of. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll just add this first. I was thinking of adding uh, the matches, the undercard matches right now, but uh, we'll just wait. Tamara Stone, Sonata. Sonata's gonna get the win, facing to the next round. Then we will have. I guess we could do Brody and Fujinami. Guess that. I mean, this is gonna be a Steelers Trend matchup. Brody's gonna win. But, I mean, that, I guess that's a fair little spot for Jay White and Pentagon Jr. As Jay White's gonna beat Pentagon, but I would love this match in real life. Uh, this is the first time meeting in the mod, so that's fun. It's always nice seeing Rie High and Pac, which again is another first time meeting with Pac getting the win in 20 minutes. A lot of these matches just kind of capped at 20. Kind of gonna give Jay White and Pentagon Jr. a little bit more time, but. And I think it should be fine, actually. Should be fine. As I woke up with a six man. As we'll go tomorrow. With Kyle. And Garcia. I think, uh, maybe show, just to change it up. Then we'll go with. I'm trying to think would be a good call. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, you know, obviously there's nobody from Dragon's Den in this tournament. So what kind of? I wouldn't say stretch thin with options on who to who would have them face, but. Yeah, let's just go Shelton. Yeah, let's go Sh uh, Strickland. And uh, we'll go Christian Casanova. This opener. As we'll have Tamora. Actually, it's, let's have Show get a win. Let's have Show beat Casanova. Nice. I'll go with a tag match as the opener. Hey, that is the Coughlin Connors. Oh, yeah, I mean, we could go with either Francesco and Yo. Could go with. Yeah, I could go El Kakui and Eagles. But I figured we'd do El Kakui and Eagles against um, Gulak and um, Gavin McGavin since. On, on the next night, figure that makes sense since uh, Mark or since Black and Great O'Connor having that match. Uh, yeah, but Fujita, Rex still considered a uh, young lion, so that's why we we haven't put him in anything yet. We're probably gonna wait for Strong to do that. Just seems like the best case scenario for that. Oh, uh, let's go with... Let's just go top flight. It's a good call, right? A little solid little matchup. Coughlin Connors and, and top flight. Wow, Coughlin Connors has never beaten them. Until now. Match that we got to see a lot of in the early stages of the save now. I mean, Coughlin Connors, I would say actually everybody in this match but Darius is, is pretty solid. That actually might be better than that six man, to be honest, because tomorrow's gonna do great, but everybody else in that match might struggle a little bit as yeah, the convention center will be the call. Yeah, we haven't ran there since December, so that's, that's nice. Nice to see there. The seventy one for the opener. Yeah, it was all stuff. Roar the champion for Clark Connors there over Darius Martin in ten thirty. Not bad at all. 
Now they're 71, so I did exactly the same. Tamora and Kyle O'Reilly, the uh, heavy lifters of this one. Sean Benjamin was the worst guy in the match. That's tough, yeah. And show, though, with the Dragon Suplex, or Dragon Suplex, Dragon Sleeper over Christian Casanova at 943. 80 for Yehi and Pac. Just shooting star press from Pac in uh, 20 minutes, picking up the win. I love that match, though. Would love to see that on, like, a dark... I, I would actually like to see that on like a Dynamite and Rampage, but I'm assuming that would not happen. It would probably happen on Dark first. Unfortunately, Pentagon Jr. outperformed him. I thought that might happen. That would have been sick if we put the win over, you know, Pentagon Jr. over Jay White, but no. no unfortunately not. As uh, and It's a fun match, though. It's a fun match. 73 for Brody and Fujinami. It's Brody Lee with the Brody Bomb and 12. 22. Fun little matchup, though. This is a pretty solid show so far. The main event's an 82, and Sonata beats Hammerstone with the rounding body press. Solid show. Really solid show. I mean, everything in the, in the light greens, you can't beat that. Can't beat that. Solid little show. And now on to the last day of the first round matches, which I think is going to be a, a, maybe the best day out of the four. Uh, that, I mean, Hiromu, Kushida, Okan, and Doring all in singles matches. Should be a pretty solid first night here. We'll see, or the last night rather, as uh, we'll see how that all plays out. All right, the last first round matchups, as uh, we actually have added the two undercard matches already to the card, so we are squared away. We can just rock and roll here. As Alex Reynolds was brought for us. Court accused him moaning about uh, moaning about stuff all the time, bumming on us out. As the judge wrote, she thought she found them guilty and sends to shut up or cheer up and buy drinks after the show. So Gata passing on Psychology to the Great Okan, and uh, let's see what Kojima's passing on. Microphone work to Hayato Tamora. As, uh, of course, New Japan World, we will be running... Let's see, I think we're going to run... I thought there was a 10,000 seat arena. I thought we could run the Akita Perfectual Gym, which is about 6,000... Yeah, I could run 2,000 here at the, uh, the large hall auditorium, and, um, you know, again, we could also run other, as far as, yeah, probably the War Memorial Hall in Kobe. It's another good call. Or even the Hiroshima Sun Plaza, you know, as far as, since we haven't ran there since December. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Hiroshima Sun Plaza it is. On the main event... Is a good question what that's going to be. I mean, I think Hiromu and Fredericks is kind of the best bet. Hiromu's going to get the win in 20. Uh, then we'll have Kushida and Takuya Nomura. Steal the show matchup, which a great win for Kushida. Obviously a big guy like Takuya Nomura. This is a real tester, kind of a nice test match for Kushida. As far as, the, we're going to see how much he can, uh, as far as, how we can do in the heavyweight circle here in that matchup. So that should be fun to see. Doring and Kitamura, which Doring will win. And then Malachi Black versus the Great Okan. The Great Okan will win. That's going to be a technical masterclass matchup. As uh, Lee Moriarty and Akira Francesco will be the second undercard matchup. Lee Moriarty will be getting the win. So a little United Empire revenge. And then Eagles and El Kakui. Which House of Black are going to be beating United Empires of Gulak and Gavin McGavin. A little uh, Australian on Australian violence there with Eagles pinning Gavin McGavin. But yeah, uh, you know, as far as so that is the uh, the first round in the books. So we can take a look now at what the second round is going to look like. So we'll take that away. We will. Oh yeah, we can show this now. Perfect. So uh, yes, yeah, so Eddie Kingston will be taking on Tai Chi. And uh, the second round, don't mind the big ass black mark there between uh, Naito and Daichi. Uh, it actually then went a little too far on that side, so I had to just fill it out the complete, completely black, uh, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. I didn't know what to do with Claudia and Roderick Strong, so I just kind of left it blank. Just felt like that was going to be the easiest way to go about it. So yeah, Ray Phoenix already advancing to the uh, the third round, the quarterfinals. So that is massive for him. As far as he'll take on the winner, obviously, of Taichi and Eddie Kingston. So it, it might be a Task Force Death versus Task Force Death matchup. Or Tai Chi might be going into the quarterfinals. So that, that is massive to think. Uh, Volta versus Shingo. Love that match. Kenton Miro. Also love that match. Pac and Brody Lee. 
they had a little bit of a feud there for a hot minute. I remember they had the uh, King of Pro Wrestling uh, tables matchup after Pac kept on losing to Brody. And uh, that was the first time he finally beat him. Uh, Sonata and Jay White, which should be a fun matchup. Hiromu and Kushida. Boy, oh boy. How, uh, I mean, that has, uh, obviously, that was Hiromu's first major match after Excursion. He beat Kushida at Wrestle Kingdom 11, and uh, that really took him off as far as being a major player in New Japan. And uh, to see these guys again face off in obviously completely different spectrums of where they're at in their careers now. Hiromu's now been a heavyweight champion, an intercontinental champion. Kind of did everything that Kushida wanted to do. Uh, so maybe, you no know, chance for Kushida. Maybe that type of uh, motivation could help him beat Hiromu there than Great Okan and Joe Doring. A couple of big, muscly motherfuckers right there. I know Okan obviously known for kind of more of his the technical aspects of things, but he could fuck somebody up too if, if given... The opportunity. I think that's going to be some, some fun second round matches though. In uh, this next round here as we will run this show. Here for day four. That's 67 for the opener. Uh, Robbie Eagles over Kui beating Drew Gulak and Gavin McGavin. It's the War 4-5 for Eagles over Gavin McGavin. Yeah, I mean Gulak and uh, Robbie Eagles are the best guys. Figured so. Figured that was going to happen. Another 67. It's Moriarty beating Kira Francesco. That was actually really close. Shout out to Kira Francesco, though, uh, as far as, uh, I would love to see this on Strong. I think that'd be pretty fun to see, but yeah, Moriarty getting the win there in, uh, 16 minutes. Pretty solid. Malachi Black losing to the Great Okan, Cobra Clutch from the Great Okan in 1932. Fun win for the Great Okan as, uh, yeah, getting, going into the second round. I think it's much deserved. Obviously the better guy going on to the next round. And Doring and Ketsu Kitamura could have won either way. Potentially there, but Doring beating Katsuki Nomura with the Revolution Bomb. That was a 69. Another 69 here for Kushida and Takuya Nomura. I mean, it didn't really steal the show, but Kushida with the Kushida lock over Takuya Nomura, and he outperformed him. So, right guy wins. Going on to the main event, though, it is a 76. Hiromu over Carl Fredericks. Not sure what's happening with Carl Fredericks, but it is not looking too well. Poor momentum, inconsistency, uh, you know, not not the greatest of, of ways of going about that, but man... A 50, though, is brutal. Like, El Kukui and Gavin McGavin outperformed him. Like, that's... You can't be doing that. Definitely one of the worst nights as far as from this first four rounds. Uh, but yeah, on to the second round we go. Alrighty, so this will be, uh, as far as for day five here, this is an interesting night because uh, usually we just have, you know, our kind of four and four. Like, you know, we split it up where the... Uh, yeah, as far as we'll showcase here, uh, like the left side here of the bracket as, uh, now it's, it's not one me to, yeah, I don't know why, uh, for some odd reason the mouse is not over the graphic, but, uh, basically the left side of the bracket there is usually on day five, and then, the, you know, day six is the right side, and then day seven, it's, you know, you have kind of the combination of, uh, all the, uh, as far as from the uh, quarterfinals and the semifinals to see who's going to be in the finals. But this is going to be a little bit different, uh, which is going to be uh, nice to see. So all of the second round matches are going to take place today. Uh, thanks to the bye from, uh, as far as Ray Phoenix, we kind of have an even eight as far as the matches go. So that's going to be fun to see as far as Kingston and Tai Chi. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a pretty... Solid matchup, but you kind of we uh, showcase the the winners here at the bottom right of the screen, so you guys can kind of see a little bit as far as who's going to be uh, in the quarterfinals. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's uh, we'll, we'll get rid of that for now. Uh, yeah, let's let's go with after round two. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, New Japan World. We got a backstage incident. As it's Kojima, passing on microphone to Heiau Tamora. Alrighty. As the yeah, Ashino and Miro, AJ and Juice, Tanashino and, and uh, Josh Alexander was also on that card. So, I wonder why it was only six. Or not why it was only six, why it was like that, but that's okay. Uh, so, the main events. Ooh, I mean, Kenta Miro is pretty solid. So is Pac and Brody, though. We'll probably go Kenta Miro. Kenta's gonna win, though, right? At the 28-minute mark. That's a major win, though. Kenta going on to the next round. Pac versus Brody Lee. Pac's going to beat Brody there as... Uh, I kind of want to do a little 
I'll recap, because yeah, Brody had beaten him during the Wrestle Grand Slam show, and then he also beat him during the G1. The following year, there's that tables match in the King of Pro Wrestling match. That's the last time they faced off against each other, so it's been a, a hot minute since they've had a match against each other. I think this was the perfect time to have this match up here. and yeah, Pocket the win, too. I think that's nice to see. Uh, Hiromu and Kushida, I really love that match. And to have Kushida win, too, is massive. I think giving Kushida this win is awesome to see. Because, obviously, they have not touched since his... Well, cause actually, they technically might have touched. Depending on how that, uh... The big-ass 10-man would have went at the Road 2 Anniversary Show. But other than that, haven't had a singles match or anything like that. So, this is massive. You know, it's massive to see in Kushida beating Hiromu. Surprised Hiromu's not complaining about that, to be honest. What a guy. Sonata J. White can go here. Sonata's gonna beat Jay White. As far as they have... Uh, they, they never had a singles match either. We're having a lot of first-time matches, which is pretty awesome to see for a series that's five years in. And you're still able to bust out some fresh matches. Obviously, I think it's because of New Japan's kind of schedule is why we're able to do that. But it's nice to see. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Uh, we'll go with uh, the Great Okan and Joe Doring next. Which Okan will be beating Joe Doring. What an upset, though, potentially there as far as... I think Okan's going to outperform him. But here's a guy in the Great Okan beating a, a former Triple Crown champion. Like That's a massive win for the Great Okan. They've never had a singles match either. So another first time meeting. And Walter and Shingo. As Walter will be beating Shingo. We need to steal the show match in the technical masterclass matchup though. So I'm not sure exactly what match will be what. But Walter beating Shingo. This is mainly from a size perspective. Uh, Shingo beat him. Or Walter rather beat him last year during the G1. So that's two straight wins for Walter there. Over Shingo. Then Kingston and Tai Chi. Which uh, Kingston will get the win. I was thinking maybe having this be the technical masterclass matchup. It's not going to be great, but it's kind of, it's got to probably be the best case scenario, honestly, there. So yeah, we'll have, but yeah, we got to give this more time, because obviously with the show being a little different than usual, uh, we'll go with a three-hour show. Yeah, we're good on time. For sure. Um, Yeah, the steal the show match is what's going to be interesting, because... I don't think it should be Volter and Shingo. I mean, it could be Okan and Doring. That could kind of, I mean, Doring obviously not the technical guy at all, but it would give Okan kind of a competitive advantage as far as that's why he won the match. So we might go with that from a story perspective. So we'll have that be the Masterclass matchup, and then this will be the Steel the Show matchup. I like that. That's, that's a little bit different. A little bit different than what we usually do. But Kingston getting a win, though, is massive. So it's, it is going to be uh, Kingston versus Ray Phoenix. As far as this is what the bracket is looking like after round two. As far as Eddie Kingston and Ray Phoenix in the quarterfinals. Walter and Kenta in the quarterfinals as well. Then Pac and Sonata on the other side of the bracket. And Kushida and the Great Okan. Don't think a lot of people probably saw that coming as far as what was going to be the quarterfinals from that side of the bracket, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think as far as, pretty, uh, interesting that we have, uh, f we have four Gaijins, and then I think we have four Japanese Day of Talent in the quarterfinals, if I am correct, as, uh, let, let me just double check, one, two, three, and then, uh, yeah, and four for Pac, yeah, and then, yeah, Kushida, a three, and then four for Gendo, yeah, dead even, four and four. I like that. That that uh, just worked out that way. That was not the intention. Well, that's cool, though. Yeah, so Kingston beating Tai Chi. Oh, Marty Osami's uh, reffing too much. I was about to say, we should be good to go. Uh, we will give that to Red Shoes. That Kenta Mira match is going to be sick, though. Yeah, I was thinking of having this be at Kanto. I think potentially Budokan would be... Well, we should probably save it, actually. Oh, Saka Joe Hall would be cool. Oh, man. Man, oh man, just... I think... Yeah, I think we, we should run. Either the War Memorial Hall, or even the uh, Arena Osaka show. Yeah, man, it's... I mean, it would be nice. I know it's not going to be a sellout in the Osaka Joe Hall. I think we should probably... Oh man, I'm so torn. So torn. Yeah, we'll run... 
Now, there's the former Osaka Prefectural Gym for this Day 5 show. The 68 for the opener. Yeah, I mean, I think it told a good story. Uh, and the rating probably suffered because of that, but uh, Okan getting the win over Joe Dwayne with a big lariat. And uh, that's an awesome win, though, for the great Okan. 70 for Kingston and Taichi. Great win for Eddie Kingston, though. He was able to really show his stuff there. That's awesome. See, Taichi was visibly tired, and he was off his game, too. He just kind of stung it up out there. But Eddie Kingston, it's awesome to see him doing well here in that matchup. 74 for Volter and Shingo. Love it. Volter with a golden bomb in 23-35. That got a 74. Or 87 for Sonata and Jay White. Skull in for Sonata. And uh, that's, a, that's a fun match. Got the crowd hotter, too. Yeah, love to see it. 83 for Hiromu and Kushida as man. Yeah, Hiromu with a 90. Kushida with a 73. The Supernova Press. What a win for Kushida, though, over Hiromu. Uh, massive. Absolutely massive to see. And 85 for Pac and Brody. As uh, Pac obviously getting the win. But the Shooting Star sent on in 2619. It's a great win for Pac. And then our main event in 88. Kenta and Miro. 83s and 80s as Kenta combo into the Busaiku knee. What a win for Kenta at 28-15. And uh, that's a massive match. Could have went either way there. It's Kenta and Miro. 86, though, for the show rating. We'll take it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Sonata and Jay White probably should have been the co-main, but that's okay. We would have, you know, put that at the co-main. This would have been a perfect show as far as from the flowing perspective of things. But uh, I'm still happy with that show, obviously. Yeah, on to uh, day six now. We'll see... How, well, you know, we got the quarterfinals, and then the semifinals is set for day seven. But, yeah, Ray Fenix, he got the advantage of having that bye. We'll see how that plays out against Eddie Kingston, because obviously Kingston and uh, Ray Fenix obviously in the same stable. But that is, you know, speed versus power in uh, that matchup, as far as, um, you know, Kingston might backfist him into the future, as far as uh, trying to counter the Meteor. That kind of be a, a, a sick finish to see, actually. But, uh, yeah, on to the next day we go. Alrighty, day six, as uh, we have Eddie Kingston, Ray Fenix, Kushida, the Great Okan, Pac, and Sonata, and Volta, and Volta, rather, in Kenta, as uh, we'll get to see who will be in our semifinals. Uh, we're going to have a Volta, Eddie Kingston semifinals. We're going to have a Kenta, Eddie Kingston semifinals. Either way, Task Force Death has a chance of making it to the semifinals. They got three out of the four guys on that side of the bracket, and Kushida and the Great Okan... A unique matchup there, and Pac and Sonata should be a banger as well. As uh, we will be, of course, going to New Japan World for this show. Chris Charlton, I was part for Russell Court. He's moaning about stuff all the time, bumming us out, being a Debbie Downer. It's the Judge Hiroshi Tana. She found him guilty and sends the shut up or cheer up and buy drinks after the show. And Shibata and Espy Kento passing on selling tips is a uh, Shibata to Espy Kento there. Of course, we haven't seen Nakamura. Uh, you know, he's got to take on SB Kento in that uh, little non-title matchup. Of course, he, he wanted that heavyweight versus junior boy matchup, but pushed it back to this uh, New Japan Cup show instead of the anniversary show because he wanted to take on Naito. As, uh, yeah, I, the main event's definitely, I don't know, Kento and Falter does seem pretty awesome. I think Pox and is probably the right choice, though. Sonata's going to win right before the 30-minute mark. That's a huge win for Sonata. Uh, as far as they're 1-1 one one in singles matches, so the trilogy matchup here. They've been interesting. We won with the draw here, but yeah, they haven't had a match in two years. So that's that's pretty awesome to see. Yeah, I love it, though. Love the match. Um, you know, those were both 80s when we did that then, and I think they should be in the 85-plus category today. Volter and Kenta, as uh, this is going to be the technical masterclass. Kenta's going to get the win over Volter, so there, there goes that being the co-main event. Uh, I guess we'll go with... I mean, Kingston and Ray Fenix should be a banger, though, at the same time. Ray Fenix going to get the win over Eddie Kingston in the 26th minute. So we'll have that be there. Uh, Kushido, the Great Okan. Ooh, this makes more sense to be the Tactical Mass Class match, if we're being honest here. So Great Okan going to beat Kushida. So that will mean, of course, as uh, we will bring back as far as the after... Nay, round three bracket graphic. Oh, eh, we should actually go with the big one. Uh, that makes a little bit more sense here. So you guys can actually see the motherfucker a little bit better. There we go. So yeah, so that will mean that Kenta and Ray Phoenix is a semifinal matchup on the left side and the right side of the bracket. Sonata versus the Great Okan. 
love those matches. Absolutely love them. And uh, I think each one makes sense. So, you know, potentially, you know, seeing a Kenta Ray Phoenix final appearance and also Sonata and the Great Okan a potential final appearance. Either way, all four of those guys have never been in the semifinals or even the finals for that matter. Uh, so that's actually Sonata has been in the finals as far as in real life, but not. Oh, no, that was the semifinals. Yeah, him and uh, him and Zach. I kind of swear that was the finals. Maybe it was the finals. Now I'm thinking about it. But in the save, at least, this is the first time that they have been in the finals. So that's, you know, potentially there. But, yes, uh, Kushida in the Great Okan Tactical Masterclass matchup. Perfect. Regular. Bump that up. Well, hopefully, actually... The more I think about it, Naito and Oromu against Justice here. Naito's going to beat Hanare and Dark Order, Golden Ace, blast off the eight-man tag here. So we need a, a, actually a Steal the Show matchup. We might have this be the Technical Masterclass matchup now I'm thinking about it. Kind of booking on the fly here. So yeah, Abe over Alex Reynolds. Uh, you know, blast off getting the win. And then we will have... This be the Steal the Show matchup, I guess. Yeah. That, uh, that works for me. Bump this down to about uh, 13 minutes. This was a uh, tag team title matchup. Uh, that was, uh, what was that the... I'm trying to think. Oh, well, you should just look at the match history. I want to say that was, yeah, that was Russell Grand Slam. Back in Tokyo in uh, November. It's wild wild to see. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty solid fucking show, if I do say so myself. I think that main event's gonna deliver. Hopefully the co-main delivers as well, but I like those four matchups. They're very different, each one. You know, as far as that's like a Styles Clash, that's just one guy's bigger than the other, but they both are technically skilled, and that's another kind of Styles Clash, but uh, Pac and Sonata can both do groundwork as well, so it's a little bit more a complete matchup, and I think that's why that should be the main as well. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, it would make sense to run Budokan or even Quark in here. Quark would be pretty sick. Would be pretty sick. Yeah. Let's do it. Run Quark in for this night, and then day seven, run um, either the Osaka Joe Hall or run uh, the Budokan Hall, or just running Budokan, would be pretty sick one, too. But the 77th of the opener, as uh, Golden Ace performing very, very well in this matchup, so did Abe and GC. Actually, everybody did really well, but uh, Reynolds and Silver, which is interesting, because I thought Hobbs and Tankman would kind of struggle in this setting, but uh, Abe gets the one to figure for a leg lock. It's a good little win. There's an 80 for Naito and Oromu against Juice and Hanare. Fun little matchup there. Destino for Naito over Hanare. Makes sense. Hanare was really off his game as well, but they got the crowd buzzing. Kushida and the Great Okan. Ah, they don't click. Damn, but Okan gets the one with the big lariat in 2353. 83 for Kingston or Ray Phoenix as Kingston losing to Ray Phoenix. I think that's the right decision, obviously. It's got the crowd hotter, too, as Ray Phoenix with the Meteora in 2619. 79 for Volter and Kenta, and uh, they don't click either. Unbelievable. The bad luck we had today. Uh, but that's okay, though. As far as at least Kenta outperformed him. So there is that in the main event. A 96. Sonata beating Pac with the rounding body press. Tough break for Pac, but a hell of a match, though, and a hell of a win for Sonata and Corkin too. Great main event for Corkin, and yeah, it's crazy. Didn't think it'd be a 96-level matchup, but we'll gladly take that. Hell yeah. Hell fucking yeah. So now we get to see the semifinals. As uh, it's nice that no one had to really work twice. So it's kind of weird how that worked out that way. But yeah, that definitely was uh, is a lot better as far as from, I think, a booking perspective. Gives everybody a chance not to have to work twice. And I think it just flows well. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully we have a solid final day here going into the final show. As uh, we'll see who will be in the finals, and then we'll run down the card for the uh, New Japan Cup final show. So yeah, we're basically at the end of the tour. Alrighty, so uh, day seven, we have four matches pre-booked, so we'll have to add 
a couple, uh, yeah, I think this is just much easier to do it this way. Because to have the 8 on day 6, just way easier. I don't know why I never did this in the beginning. I know the idea was to really make that person, you know, as far as making it to the, you know, from the quarterfinals to the semifinals in one night. It was to really push them over the top as far as, like, they deserve to make it to the finals. But honestly, I think this way is a lot easier. Uh, you know, also, too, we bailed out by having a draw as well, so that helped us out a lot. But, uh, yeah, I just feel like that was much easier, and I think this path has been a lot less strenuous on the talent. Now, knowing my luck, someone's going to get injured on this night, <laughs> and it'll really fuck over the plans. Uh, but Ray Phoenix and Kintus are going to be the main. If I, you know, as far as Task Force Death versus Task Force Death, nobody laying down. They're pushing themselves to the limit, and uh, Kenta gets the win over Ray Fenix in 25 minutes. What a win, and then uh, the Great Okan and Sonata, as the Great Okan beats Sonata. Nah, that's not happening. That would have been sick, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen, as uh, Sonata going to get the win instead. I think that's the better call. Almost, though. Man, that would have been sick. That would have we would that would have been a, quite the uh, star making performance. I don't think that's the case there. I think Sonata and uh, and Kenda's the better matchup, and that is our finals. That is what we are set with. Boy, though that was we were a a match away, a match away from having something special. As uh, let me just copy it over here. Forgot to do that. So let me just do that. As, uh, man, what, what could have been, though, for the great Okan? As the New Japan Cup Finals, though, Kenta versus Sonata. Of course, we knew about the tag team title matchup with the, the Order of Destruction versus the Golden Ace team. Also, Nakamura versus SB Kenta, but for the new matches. So, AJ Styles and Claudio Castagnoli and Roger Strong teaming up against Zack Sabre Jr., Daniel Makabe, and Jonathan Gresham. So, the idea here, as we'll be, we'll be adding that as far as why this match is happening on this show... But since Claudio and Roderick Strong, they did not get that match as far as they didn't get to have their finish that they wanted to. And it was, you know, basically because Roddy didn't get that chance to, I mean, didn't get the uh, the opportunity, rather, to beat Claudio Castagnoli fair and square. And, and just kind of rubbed him the wrong way. And as far as AJ and Roddy, they're like, hey, let's, you know, listen, you're not going to have to take those guys on alone. We'll have, you know, as far as Zach and, and Maccabay and Gresham in that matchup as well. Uh, but a nice little six-man tag there. And another six-man tag matchup as House of Black versus the United Empire of the Great Okan, Valter, and Lee Moriarty. Which, uh, that should be a fun matchup, though. Super excited to see how that plays out. As, uh, yeah, I, I think that's the, uh, the right decision, though. I think that's the right decision for sure. Man, now I'm really contemplating the Great Okan in Kent. I really am. Because we could have Sonata be in that LIJ Court of Justice matchup, and then we could switch out Okan with Josh Alexander. Oh, man. Boy, that would be sick, but I just I don't think that's the play. Don't think that's it. I think Sonata and Kent is the better matchup, so we'll stick with that. But that LIJ Court of Justice matchup, it's an eight-man tag. It's going to be... Naito, Hiromo, Shingo, and, uh, yeah, actually, Naito, Hiromo, Shingo, and Bushi taking on the Court of Justice, which is obviously Juice, Hanare, uh, having also Tai Chi, and, uh, also El Fantasma in that matchup as well. Lucha Brothers versus Jay White and Miro, so this is gonna be a little number one contendership matchup for the tag team titles, as far as the winner of this matchup takes on the winner of the co-main event at the... Uh, not the, uh, the Sakura Genesis show, actually. It's going to be at the, the Wrestling Dutaku show. So that should be exciting. Uh, I believe that will be at night two of Wrestling Dutaku. So just a little booking ahead in the opener. Since we're doing Task Force Death versus House of... To or House of... Yeah, House of Torture. Uh, about, I got my houses mixed up for a second. But yeah, Lucha Brothers versus House of Torture. And then uh, Task Force Death versus House of Torture. Pac, Kingston, Shoto Yumino versus Brody King, Taiji Shimori, and Drew Parker to open up the show. So that should be fun to uh, to see. Yeah, I think for this show, yeah, we have Dark Order, Blast Off, as far as a fun little matchup. 
steals a show match at Black Taurus versus Shun Sky or beating Shun Skywalker rather as a little six man tag and then Naito and Bushi Tai Chi El Fantasmo to open up the show. Uh, tai Chi and El Fantasmo are a terrible team. Uh, so that's why this is going to be a Tactical Masterclass matchup. But Naito's going to beat El Fantasmo as well. I would love to see tag match between uh, Brody King and Drew Parker against either Kingston Yumino or Pac and Yumino. I guess it could go either way. I think I'm going to go with Kingston and Yumino, though. Oh, Kingston and Shota Yumino. Eh, 16 minute matchup. So we'll have Brody be Yumino. We've done this before. This has happened, I want to say, at least once. Might have happened twice. Yeah. Let's say that was the anniversary show. Oh, you know, I thought, you know, that could make a lot of sense, though, to have Eddie beat Brody. Yeah, let's do that. Be one on one. I like it. Bump it up a little bit now. 18 minute matchup. Uh, yeah, we'll have that go after. I think that's the right call. Oh, uh, you know, we could go with a... Like a Shingo... Shingo Horomu versus... Uh, like, Katsuyu Kitamura and Josh Alexander match. Don't hate that. That'd be a nice little prequel to uh, the co-main event. Shingo... And Hiromu. As well have Hiromu beat Josh Alexander. Be a nice win for him. Big night for LIJ. That is for sure. Oh, that's right. We, um... That's actually... I'm trying to think what we should scrap now. Instead. We could probably scrap that Naito Bushi. Tai Chi El Fantasma match, actually. So yeah, we'll scrap that. We will um, have now, as far as we'll have Claudio team up with Roddy. I like that. It's kind of Roddy being like, listen, that's, you know, let's get revenge on those bastards. I mean, having them take on Makabe and Gresham is pretty wild. But I think that's the right call. First of all, this match is crazy. But also to give Claudio a win over Gresham, I think that's a fun little match. As well, and also potential being like, oh, is he going to join Rushmore? Type of thing. So I like that as well. We need one more minute. I <laughs> so, uh, guess we'll give this an extra minute there. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, you know, instead of Naito and Bushi on the card, I think that's a better matchup anyways to have. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could run Budokan here. I know it's not going to be a sellout. So we might go with the old Osaka Dome. Or Osaka Joe Hall, rather. Oh, he did just run there, uh, too, so. Yeah, I think, uh. Yeah, we could definitely run uh, somewhere over here, too. I know we, there's, uh, like a 6,000 seat, the, the Akita Perfectional Gym. I don't hate that, yeah. Let's do that. Perfect. Oh, so yeah, let's run the show. Yep, 86. Figured so. Figured so. Got the show off to a strong start, but uh, Claudia with the neutralizer over Gresham. Love it. Absolutely love that. 76 for Dark Order and Blast Off. It's Black Taurus pinning Shun Skywalker with the Infernal Suplex there. Abe with a 77. Best guy of the match. Shun Skywalker and Alex Reynolds did about the same. Shun Skywalker, was, Shun Skywalker was off his game, but Black Taurus getting a nice win. It's nice to see with the Infernal Suplex. 70 for Eddie Kingston. Show to Yumino against uh, Brody King and Drew Parker. Man, show to Yumino, even with the edited stats, he still is terrible. I don't know what it is. Kingston beating Brody King with a backdrop driver is sick. What a finish. Tough break for the House of Torture team. 71, though, and I knew it. I knew someone was going to get fucking hurt, as uh, at least it's Hiromu, as Hiromu and Shingo... 
beating Josh Alexander and Katsuya Kitamura. I bet it was Katsuya Kitamura caused it, but uh, Hiromu wins with a time bomb over Josh Alexander. Oh. Yep. Knew it. I fucking knew it. 75, though, for the co-main event. Sonata over the Great Okan is, yeah, Sonata with the 84. Skull End win over the Great Okan in our main event. And 83, yeah, I forgot they don't click. But uh, Kenta beats Ray Fenix with the go to sleep in 24-33. Tough break that that didn't go as as well as I thought it would, but um, still a decent little show. Crazy that the opener was the best thing on the card, but looking at that, it, it does make sense. Pretty solid show from top to bottom, though, if I do say so myself. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as who to put over, probably Ray Fenix, Kenta, and, um, uh, I mean, probably Jonathan Gresham, to be honest, since he was the best guy in that match. Pretty solid stuff, but I do love how this tour's went. It's been pretty even, been pretty back and forth, there's been a lot of good stuff, and, uh, you know, throughout the tour, obviously, the 196 was definitely the highlight of the tour, but, man, that opener was fun to see. I, you know, that Claudio Roderick Strong, I think that's a great little teasing of, like, is he going to join Rushmore? Because that would be pretty sick. Would be pretty sick. As, yeah, on to the final show here. The New Japan Cup Finals will be underway shortly. Alrighty, the New Japan Cup Finals is here. Yeah, we did run this in Osaka Joe Hall. I figured so. And yeah, Shino Nakamura. It's crazy that I only got a 91. Of course, we had the IWGP Everweight title matchup on this card as well last year. Kata Ray Phoenix, 99. Tough match to follow. Yeah, a lot of, uh, yeah, and then Hiromu and Zack Sabre Jr. That's, that's wild. Wild indeed. Yeah, that was the return of uh, Nakamura. What an arc, you know, as far as to return. And then you're in the finals of the cup, and now you're going in as the champion. It's a solid three-year arc for the man of the hour. As... Sonata well, that helped create a great atmosphere backstage when he pulled a great rib on the entire locker room. Fuck yeah. Way to go, Sonata. As he's passing on depth of microphone work. This Kojima to Hiyato Tomura. So yeah, on the main event, of course, for the New Japan Cup. Kenta versus Sonata, and it is Kenta. What a win for Kenta. First of all, he has done just about everything now in New Japan. He's been heavyweight champion. Uh, did we give him the... No, we haven't given him the Intercontinental Champion ship run yet, but uh, he's been a tag champ, he's been a U.S. champion, he's been a never avoid champion, literally everything, and he's been a six-man champ, obviously, uh, he's not won the King of Pro Wrestling, but this is, you know, his first cup win, he did not win the G1, when, was he in the finals one year, am I making that up, yep, making it up, I could have swore we put him in the finals one year, but no, uh, so yeah, he's done literally everything, as far as in New Japan goes, besides the G1 win, an IC title win, and a, a New Japan uh, King of Pro Wrestling, which obviously is a new thing. But that's not bad. That is not a bad run for, you know, as far as... Because the U.S. title was something we did. Uh, we Because we booked all of that. Because, yeah, uh, well, he was a never overweight champion before. But we gave him another run with it during the save. That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Sorry, the end, he hasn't won like a tag league either. But you never know. You never know. That's fun, though. I think that's a fun main event, and uh, I think that's the right decision now to have Kenta. So, yeah, Kenta Nakamura, uh, which that was a title match. I want to say that was a title match last year. Could be wrong. Let's just go to Nakamura, make this a little easier. Uh, yes. It's the whole year. Yes, uh, yes it was. All of them attack. So Kenta gets a rematch. It's a big match. Big match for sure. We'll uh, we'll have to see how that plays out. Of course, that's Soccer Roger Genesis. But so far, I mean, Nakamura's run's been incredible. Even the Barbera Carbonero match was a 97. So he's got, to, he definitely has the skills to take that to the next level. Uh, but yes, New Japan. Here we go. Here we go. I had to make sure we brought up the right card. Also, Order of Destruction, Golden Ace for the tag team titles. Golden Ace will retain. It's a good run. It's a good run so far for Golden Ace. So we're going to keep the belts on them. Uh, they've been fantastic, really. They they really have been. Um, 
Well, I'm Daichi Marama, be the ref for this one since I knew he, uh, Red Shoes was already got the main. Nakamura and SB Kento, heavyweight champions, junior champion. Heavyweight champion will win this one. And so, yeah, again, we're going to give that one, uh, we'll give that one to Marty Asami. As uh, Shinsuke Nakamura is going to get the win, though. We're going to give him 21 minutes, though. It's a lot of time. Thought about making this just a sealer show, like, 13, 14 minute matchup. But to give SB Kento some, a chance, really, to improve and develop and to, you know, bust out some cool shit on Shinsuke. I think it'd be fun. Would be fun. There. As uh, then, the AJ Styles, Claudio Castagnoli, Roger Strong, six man against United Empire. And those fuckers. Rushmore. Stick the knife in Claudio Castagnoli as quickly as uh, they tried to help him out, help a brother out, stuck the knife in him, leave him uh, on a three-on-one, and Zach's going to pin him. First loss, first, you know, as far as pinfall loss for Claudio, uh, that's brutal. Brutal, but I think that's the right decision, though, at the same time, obviously. Uh, I think that's a fun... It's a fun angle, you know, I think, as far as Claudio still looking for his his stable as far as to join. And uh, to have Rushmore kind of turn on like that, I think it's a great little mini story as far as, you know, it had... You, you get to see it's a third act all within the span of a month, uh, which, you know, is short and sweet, and it's kind of perfect for kind of what we want to do here. But, yeah, and Claudio going to take the loss, obviously. But yeah, I will have a post-show press conference there regarding Rushmore, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but yeah, House of Black, United Empire, the six-man. Here as, uh, you know, Tyler Black and Valter, uh, as far as building to their Intercontinental title matchup, you know, as far as Valter set the challenge up at, at a strong taping, a couple tapings back. Uh, but yeah, and, you know, building up to that here with uh, Lee Moriarty beating uh, Robbie Eagles, though, in a, in a six-man. That's a fun six-man matchup, though. That should go over pretty well. LIJ versus the Court of Justice. The eight-man tag matchup as Juice Roms is going to be Chingo. So that's a great win. That's a great win, rather, for uh, the Court of Justice. Love it. Love it. Uh, Shingo is going to take the loss, brother. Uh, Lucha Brothers versus Jay White. Miro winner takes on Gold Dace now. And it's going to be Miro and Jay White. They are going to get the win here. Lucha Brothers, they beat them last year during the tag league, I want to say. Yes. Yeah, so they beat him back in December. Felt like it was a great time to give a win to Jay White and Miro. Uh, Given Miro the win over Ray Phoenix, too, it's pretty big. Just size advantage there, just playing, just catching them out of midair type of thing into a bullplex and uh, pinning them, getting the win. So we'll have a post show press conference for that as well. And uh, Task Force Death, House of Torture, opening matchup there as Shoto Yumino getting the win over Drew Parker. We're trying. We're trying with old Shoto Yumino. We'll. Get it over sooner rather than later. Uh, yeah, we need to steal the show match. That's right. That is correct. Damn, I'm really not sure what I want it to be. I think it should be this six man. I think that would make a little bit more sense. So it's not like a 20 minute match and then that the turn happens. The turn makes sense as far as quickly into the matchup. Yeah. I like it. Oh, I like it a lot. All right. So uh, the post show stuff. So we're still on B. Kenta. So just Kenta is the, the winner, and, you know, Task Force Death's around him. It's a big night for him. And so, yeah, we'll have Eddie Kingston. We'll have uh, Ray Phoenix. So we'll have Pac as well, and Pentagon Jr. The whole gang's there. With them celebrating this win. Shame, champagne pop, and you know, getting uh, holding up the belt, hoisting the belt, and uh, Kenta's wanting to finish the deal though. And this is just the beginning for him. He's wanting to beat Nakamura. Talking about that matchup, hyping that up, obviously for Sakura Genesis, and uh, post show press conference as Rushmore and uh, AJ Roddy in the box, just kind of yeah, you know, just laughing their ass off of what just happened. And uh, just Roddy just being like, oh, you know, <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? You know, I was, I should have won. You know, I should have beat you. And, uh, you know, listen, thanks, Zach, for the help. But I, I still would like to, you know, beat you. You know, Claudio Castagnoli, th this is Rushmore. There's four of us. It's not a, a five. It's not no, no five-man Rushmore. You don't have your top five. 
Rushmore, you know, as far as this is your top four, your GOATs. It's AJ, it's Roderick Strong, it's the Young Bucks, that's what it is. And that's what it's always going to be type of thing, and just uh, it's laughable that Claudio believed that he could belong with uh, with us as far as being a top-tier stable. And, uh, you know, that to poke fun at Claudio like that, I think, obviously, I think a lot of people could probably see the, the arc on where we're going with it, but simple. It's a simple story, but it's, you, we gotta get there, obviously. We gotta get there, and uh, we'll have the strong match with him and Roddy. That will be on strong. And then uh, Sakura Genesis will have... AJ and uh, Brody Lee, and uh, the winner of that match, take on Claudio Castagnoli at Dead Wrestling Dutaku. That's the, the the arc, and that's what we're going with as far as going for it. I think that's that's a fun idea as a uh, as a finish as far as for for that angle. I think everyone can kind of see where we're going. But uh, yeah, and for the last one that we'll do post show press conference for, as uh, we'll we'll just have it be for. Hot House of Torture. So Jay White and Miro. And Jay White, you know, hyping up the tag team title matchup. is talking about all the things he's done in New Japan. Runs down his accolades. You know, heavyweight champ. G1 winner. Intercontinental champion. U.S. champion. Never open weight champion. There's one thing he hasn't done. And that's a tag team championship run. And that's what he's aiming for. And that's what he's wanting with him and Miro. I think him and Miro, the top team in New Japan. He's going to prove it at... Uh, Sakura Genesis. Oh, no, that's right. It's not Sakura Genesis. Wrestling Dutaku again. Uh, which, yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting that we're hyping up stuff for Dutaku as well as Sakura Genesis, but Sakura Genesis is obviously literally, like, the next month, obviously, you know, in, in, in April, you know, as far as not only just next month, but, like, the next week uh, type of thing. And then, obviously, with Dutaku, that's, you know, the, the, you know, having the split card and got a lot of things to book, a lot of things to, to bump up, and uh, I think this is... I think it's a good little story, you know, I think from this perspective. But, uh, yeah, three little post-show press conferences tells the story. Uh, but I, we could have had one for House of Black. Thought about it with, with Tyler Black. Thought it'd be fun to kind of have, have him poke fun at Okada and have him, yeah, let's do that. It'd kind of be fun. Just poking fun at, you know, as far as he beat you know, Okada so bad that you know, he hasn't been seen. And, you know, tuck his tail between his legs and Ran back to his wife type of thing. And hyping up the match with Walter. As well, you know, as far as four. That's actually happening at Sakura Genesis. So that that is nice to have. That, that'd be nice to see. Oh, uh, actually, let's make sure he's off screen. There we go. Oh, yeah, also, almost forgot. Okada. Being involved, also putting over Okada as far as you know, getting him, you know, getting the, the word out there about him, <laughs> which doesn't need to, but it's as far as you know, obviously, he's not been on the program for a month, so it's nice to keep him like, again relevant to like uh, keeping you know, you don't want to be out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Um, trying to think, yeah, we'll have that be after Kenta. A lot of guys in post show pros, uh, press conferences, though. It is what it is. I guess we could have one against with Nakamura, but we already have four. I think that's a solid, solid run. Oh, uh, but yeah, also forgot to almost pick the venue. Yes, 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 yes. Osaka Joe Hall. Won't be a sellout, unfortunately. If we did not run that day five show there, that definitely would have been a sellout. But that's okay, though. Still a, a hell of a match for our main event, and I think it's still going to be a very good card. 75 at the opener. That's not bad at all. It's obviously Pac helping that match out a lot, but Shota Yumino with a 39 again. Jesus Christ, Shota Yumino. You gotta do something, bud. I don't know if we gotta send him down to Mexico or something. Like, something's gotta happen where we gotta help him be elevated. Because it just ain't happening here. 88, though, for the tag team matchup of Lucha Brothers and Jay White and Miro. 97 for Ray Fenix is pretty crazy. Obviously, with the chemistry boost and whatnot, hell of a team there. Uh, but Miro with the game over. Oh, well, that, that could also work, too. Kind of catch the Meteora. With, uh, like a belly-to-belly -belly suplex, then the bullplex. Or even counter it into a power bomb. That could also work. There's a lot of things you could do. Because Miro's so goddamn big. That would be pretty sick, though. Him catching, the, like, the meteor into something. Yeah, it's the visual of that finish. Is an A-plus for me. But yeah, it, it, you know, as far as Jay White and Pentagon Jr. did about the same. Again, you know, that... 
thought about giving Pentagon Jr. that win over Jay White. I felt like that was the best case scenario there. 85 of the 8-man of a Court of Justice in LIJ. That's a big one for a Court of Justice, though. They could use that win. Pulp Friction, though, for Juice Robinson. So they have, I finally gave them a finish, Juice and Hanare, and just kind of Juice and anybody, because it could be with El Fantasma, or could even be with uh, with uh, Tai Chi as well. Uh, but while Juice is doing the Pulp Friction, someone jumps off the top, and as he's hitting Pulp Friction, it's a splash to the back. Uh, basically, the idea of it was uh, America's Most Wanted finish. The uh, guilty sentence. I, th- I forget what we're calling it. I think we're calling it a guilty verdict instead of uh, guilty justice. So, or uh, I think they called it the death sentence. Now I'm thinking about it. I don't know why I'm blanking on America's Most Wanted finish, but uh, I want to say it was the death sentence. But yeah, they because uh, that finish was kind of unique because obviously um, you know hanging them up by like like using your waist and kind of propping them up for the leg drop. It's kind of it looked honestly it looked kind of weird. Whereas this, I think it makes a little bit more sense. You know, Pulp Friction with the splash as well. On top of it, just kind of makes makes a lot of sense. But yeah, it's, uh, Juice getting the win over Shingo. It's a big win, though. Uh, at least Juice. Juice with an 85. That's very impressive. He was the best guy in the match. Did not see that coming. That's really awesome. Shout out Juice, man. Shout out Juice. Killing it. High morale, just rolling right along. Obviously, Aramu's injury kind of... Hurt him a little bit, but yeah, Volter and Tyler Black is looking like it's going to be a good little matchup there with the 84s, but Lee Moriarty with the joint custody in 20 minutes, not bad at all. Not bad at all. And a 60, god damn. Hated the finish. Hated it. I don't know why it was uh, illegal. F- yeah, we probably shouldn't have had to be illegal using the ropes, you know, for leverage, I think we should, you know, the story was told, and it was a three-on-one with the turn, uh, but for some reason, they all got puckered up, sometimes that happens, but yeah, uh, you know, obviously, it sucks that, that got, all, you know, discombobulated a little bit, but, um, I'd still, at least, I mean, it could have been worse, could have been worse, got the crowd buzzing, though, somehow, 82, for Nakamura and SB Kento, the, the cross arm bar, from uh, Nakamura, I think that's the, the you know good finish. Don't need to kill him, you know, just get him with a submission, get out of there. So, but the ninety-three for the tag team title matchup as uh, Bushi with the Kamigori over Calvin Tankman. It's a good win. I think that was the right decision. Second defense for Golden Ace there. In our main event, the ninety-two Kenta beating Sonata with uh, the go to sleep, and he is your new Japan Cup winner. Sonata was off his game, so that's tough. If you're Sonata, you know you get your big opportunity in main event, Osaka Joe Hall and. You kind of shit the bed. Not good. And also lack of psychology. But I, I'd say at least the show had a pretty solid main event. Had a pretty solid showing. The post-show press conference was doing pretty well there. That's nice to see. But yeah, I mean, we get a 91 out of it. So there, there is that. Obviously, this six-man with the finish kind of got fuckered up. We should have just had the turn happen and not have it be called a uh, distraction finish or whatever. And just have it be a three-on-one where just Claudio can't. You know, it's a numbers game type of thing. But yeah, you know, I'm still super happy with the card. Obviously, this goes a little bit better. I think the whole card goes over well, but it is what it is. I'll still take a 91. Definitely going to put over Kenta. Uh, Definitely want to put over Juice Robinson, though. That's a hell of a performance in that matchup. Like, he did really, really well. And uh, as far as... I don't want to put over Ray Phoenix again. Probably put over Jay White or Miro, maybe. Actually, you should probably put over, like, uh, Kota Bushi or Tana. She probably could go with Tana there. But, yeah, thank you all for watching for Episode 71, the New Japan Cup. And, uh, yeah, Sakura Genesis. Basically, uh, the card is, uh, you know, Nakamura, Kenta, heavyweight title, Volter, Tyler Black, IC title. Uh, we're also going to have, you know, we talked about AJ Styles and Brody Lee which is going to get built up at this strong taping, is the plan. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see, because we're also going to tease, uh, you know, Dark Order adding Claudio Castagnoli. So that's, you know, we're keeping up with that story as well. So it's a nice little two two birds with one stone type of thing there, with uh, Brody Lee and, and uh, Claudio, you know, as far as trying to get him to join Dark Order, but also building potentially to AJ and Castagnoli, or even maybe, you know, Claudio... 
And uh, as far as Birdie Lee, even, you know, if, if that goes sour again, if people keep on turning on poor Claudio, yeah, pay raise for Tai Chi and Corey Jarvis, even though Jarvis barely works, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, Soccer Rod Genesis, uh, I think it's, what, two tour shows? Oh, it's four tour shows. That is quite a lot, to be honest. For such a short turnaround. Well, that, I mean, I guess that is what it is. We've got to build up a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, we're looking good. I, you know, we put a lot of money into uh, New Japan World. I believe we are now maxed out at huge all the way around. Yep. We sure are. It would now cost $63 million to upgrade to, to the U.S. I'm not sure what we'd upgrade next. Probably Japan. Just to get that out of the way and just go from there. We're almost making a million dollars per month, which is pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Yes, thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Take care, everyone.